In this video tutorial, we're going to be discussing something called the Reynolds number. And the Reynolds number can be used to tell us something about the flow characteristics of a fluid traveling within a pipe or duct. In the example we're going to be discussing, our fluid has a density of 780 kilograms per meter cubed. It has a dynamic viscosity of 0.15 newton seconds per meter squared. And we're assuming that the pipe diameter in all three of these examples is 140 millimeters. So we have the same fluid traveling through the same pipe. The only thing that's changing is the velocity of the fluid. So we're going to be discussing three different types of flow. And moving from left to right, we're going to discuss laminar flow. We're going to discuss transitional flow. And we're going to discuss turbulent flow. We're also going to look at how the Reynolds number can be used to determine what type of flow we have in that pipe. So if we start on the far left hand side with laminar flow, we can see that the particles of the fluid are flowing in layers across each other. We would describe this as smooth flow because there's no mixing between those layers. You'll notice that the velocity at the centre of the pipe is larger than at the outsides and the reason for that is because we have a shearing effect due to friction at the walls. If you wanted a visual representation of this, just imagine that you're standing on a bridge looking into a river. At the centre, the river flows much more quickly than at the outsides and the reason for that is because at the outsides there's friction between the banks of the river. So we have the fast moving water in the centre and at the outside we may even have stationary or stagnant water. And that's because the fluid at the banks isn't flowing. We often see this described as the flow profile and a flow profile might be drawn something like this. Where the velocity at the walls is zero and the velocity is maximum at the centre. But the important thing again is that the fluid is flowing in layers and there's no mixing between those layers. Now this type of flow is characterised by a Reynolds number less than 2000. So in this example we have a velocity of 1.2 metres per second. Now the formula that we use for calculating the Reynolds number is rho v d over mu where v is the velocity. Depending on what source of information you're using, sometimes this will be written as rho ud over mu, whereas instead of the fluid velocity being stated as v, it's stated as u. And we do see variations on that. We do see the fluid velocity expressed as u when we also have volumes involved in a given question, because v is more commonly used for volume. But it's important to be aware that you may see variations on this depending on what sources of information you're using. So let's calculate our Reynolds number. We've said that we have a density of 780. We've said we have a fluid velocity of 1.2. We have a pipe diameter of 140 millimetres. Just take care here because we need to express that in metres. And we have a viscosity of 0.15. Now when we run all of that through the calculator, we get a Reynolds number equal to 874 accurate to the nearest whole number. Now note that Reynolds number doesn't have any units, and the reason it doesn't have any units is because it's what's known as a dimensionless group. If we were to evaluate the dimensions of the Reynolds number, then all of the mass, length and time variables would cancel out. Let's move on to our second example. Now transitional flow is characterised by Reynolds numbers between 2000 and 3000. So in this second example we have a velocity of 3.5 metres per second, so we can calculate our Reynolds number using the density 780 times the velocity 3.5 times the diameter 0 0.14 divided by the viscosity 0 0.15 giving us a Reynolds number this time equal to 2548. Again there's no units attached to that value. We'll come back and discuss what transitional flow looks like in a moment. Let's move on to our final example then which is turbulent flow. And turbulent flow is characterised 
by a Reynolds number that's greater than 3000. Now values for Reynolds number can run into the millions or even the hundreds of millions, but anything over 3000 would tell us that we have turbulent flow. Let's run the calculation. We have Reynolds number equals 780 times our velocity this time, which is nine meters per second, times our pipe diameter, all divided by our viscosity of 0 0.15, giving us a Reynolds number this time equal to 6552. So again, that value is clearly above 3000, therefore we know we have turbulent flow. Now, when we look at the turbulent flow within the pipe, what we see is that we have a disordered or chaotic flow. We're unable to determine the true magnitude or direction of the velocity at any given point because it's constantly changing, it's erratic. We would be able to work out the average velocity of that flow, which is what we have here as nine meters per second, but we wouldn't know the velocity at any given point. And the main reason for that is because it's changing. We have no clearly defined layers within the flow profile. Now, the reason why I saved transitional flow until last is because transitional flow is a mixture of laminar and turbulent flow. And in fact, what we see is close to the walls of the pipe, we actually have laminar flow. But within the center of the pipe, we have turbulent flow. As the Reynolds number gets closer to 3000, we would see more of that laminar flow replaced with turbulent flow in the center of the pipe until eventually the flow was fully turbulent when the Reynolds number reached 3000. In later tutorials, we'll move on to look at pressure losses, and this is largely dependent on the type of flow that we have within a pipe or a duct. So a useful starting point is to understand how to calculate the Reynolds number and how to use that Reynolds number in order to determine the type of flow within the pipe or duct.